biggest driver bust-ups in Formula One history. There's nothing like a bit of controversy when it comes to the drama of Formula One, and over the years we have seen plenty of that. But on rare occasions that controversy leads to big bust-ups and sometimes the fists are sent flying. It's been 37 years since Nigel Mansell and Ayrton Senna collided on lap one of the 1987 Belgian Grand Prix, but all these clashes are better remembered for what happened after the incidents rather than the crashes themselves. Take for instance Schumacher and Coulthard in 98, or more recently Verstappen and Ocon in 2018. Formula One has had some of the most iconic bust-ups in sports history. We start first with our honourable mention that goes to Luigi Fagioli and Rudolf Caracciola at Tripoli in 1937. Among the earliest bust-ups in the history of Grand Prix racing was between Luigi Fagioli and Rudolf Caracciola, who were teammates at the Mercedes in 1930s. But to refer to the pair as mates would not be entirely accurate. An Italian driver and an all-German team, Fagioli was effectively not allowed to win by Mercedes, with team boss Alfred Neubauer ordering him to hand the lead of his debut race to Manfred von Brauschitz in 1934. Appalled by the team's request, Fagioli parked his car in protest, leaving Neubauer outraged when he discovered the real reason behind the driver's retirement. Despite his Mercedes career getting off to a dreadful start, Fagioli remained there for a further two years when the frustration of his time with the Silver Arrows spilled over. According to the same source, Fagioli was upset after being held up by Caracciola at the Tripoli Grand Prix and attacked him with a hammer, with Neubauer and the mechanic preventing the Italian from doing serious harm. Number 10, Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg, USA 2015. It was at the Circuit of the Americas in 2015 where Hamilton wrapped up a third world championship. His teammate Nico Rosberg was the driver who saw his title chances squashed as a result, so it's understandable that he didn't feel like joining in with the celebrations. With no fists or boots were used, or really any sort of violence, Rosberg made his point clear by launching the cap that Hamilton handed him back towards him. Number 9, Jarno Trulli and Adrian Sutil, Brazil and Abu Dhabi 2009. Accidents happen in Formula 1, and for these two, that crash occurred on lap 1 at Interlagos. On the opening lap of the race, Jarno Trulli ran wide as he challenged Adrian Sutil for fourth, dipping his wheels onto the grass and spearing into the side of the Force India, who was simply minding his own business as he travelled up the hill. While Trulli's Toyota slid alongside the outside barrier, Sutil's car careered across the infield and collected Fernando Alonso's Renault in a heavy shunt. Although Trulli, in the eyes of most, was at fault for the incident, he ran over to Sutil to give the German a piece of his mind, pointing furiously at the Force India driver arm wrestled with a diminutive Italian. While the incidents gave both teams and the race blamed each other, nothing was unusual, but it became more unusual that the spat carried over to the following race in Abu Dhabi. Instead of thrashing out their differences in the track side of the paddock standoff, today's competitors meet in the controlled environment of a debrief or use the tool of social media to express their anger and destabilize their opponents. The Toyota veteran, in fact, was so convinced of his innocence that he arrived at the FIA press conference for the next round in Abu Dhabi, armed with photographs of the incident as the bickering continued. Fernando Alonso and Kimi Raikkonen apparently found it very funny. They don't make them like they used to. Number eight, James Hunt and the Marshall, Monaco, 1975. Hunt loved the party boy lifestyle while he also loved taking a swing at Marshalls, it seems. This was the first of his incidents after Patrick de Palia had shoved him into the barriers at the Monaco 1975 Grand Prix. Hunt was determined to stick around and show an angry fist at de Palia as the Marshall found out taking a right back fist for his troubles. Number seven, Ayrton Senna and Eddie Irvine, Japan 93. After winning the Japanese Grand Prix, you would have expected the celebration to be Senna's next move, but instead he went about tracking down newcomer Eddie Irvine, who had shown the nerve to unlap himself against the legend. Ayrton Senna was more of a lover than a fighter, but even Formula One's greatest philosopher found himself contaminated by the red mist on this occasion. The Brazilian was inclined to reprimanding drivers who stepped out of line. You can see him lecturing a young Michael Schumacher following their clash at Manicors in 1992 French Grand Prix, and most were receptive to the career advice from a three-time world champion. But in a debutant by the name of Eddie Irvine, Senna met his match at the Japanese Grand Prix. Senna had taken the penultimate victory of his career at Suzuka, but was less than impressed by Irvine's conduct, with the Jordan driver passing the Brazilian to unlap himself as he chased down Damon Hill for fourth place. At the end of the race, the door to the Jordan unit swung open and in marched Senna, followed by a flock of McLaren personnel. What the f do you think you're doing, said Senna. 
I was racing, was Irvine's response. On and on the exchange went, and enraged Senna made his feelings known, but the Ulsterman defended himself, offering some back chat to the McLaren driver. Before he left the Jordan garage, Senna threw a punch at Irvine, knocking him down, and while it did take away somewhat from Irvine's fantastic P6 finish on debut, it was a debut never to be forgotten. Number six, James Hunt and the Marshall Part Two, Canada, 1977. We told you he did it more than once. This time, it was at the Canadian Grand Prix. Hunt had collided with McLaren teammate Jochen Mass, and so was out of the race. Good old Ernie Strong went over to help Hunt out of his car, but got right hooked to the floor for his troubles. How did I feel? Ernie said as he recalled the incident. Wronged, blindsided, did that really just happen? If I said anything to him, I can't remember. Hunt gave me a sorry old man and headed back to the pits. Number five, Max Verstappen and Esteban Ocon, Brazil, 2018. Now there is nothing at all in the rules that says you can't unlap yourself, but be prepared for trouble if you make a mess of it. It's safe to say Ocon wiping Verstappen out of the almost certain race victory in Brazil qualifies for making a mess of it. Verstappen even called the Frenchman an expletive in the press conference afterwards. The FIA would offer the Dutchman to complete a two-day public service as punishment for pushing Ocon around in the pits after the race. Number four, Michael Schumacher and David Coulthard, Belgium, 1998. Schumacher was in the lead of a very wet Belgian Grand Prix. Visibility was non-existent and it was perfectly displayed when Schumacher smashed into the back of Coulthard and McLaren while trying to lap the Scottish driver. Having evaded the first lap demolition derby, Michael Schumacher had established a lead of around 30 seconds at the halfway stage of a wet 1998 Belgian Grand Prix. Schumacher was seemingly set to take another win when he came to David Coulthard on lap 26. Failing to vacate the racing line, however, Coulthard left Schumacher with poor visibility in the spray and the German slammed into the rear of the McLaren. With three wheels on his car and with Coulthard's rear wing torn on impact, both drivers were eliminated, coasting back to the pits to confirm their retirements. Upon his return to base, Schumacher tossed the steering wheel out of the car and clambered out of the cockpit before storming toward the McLaren garage, ripping off his crash helmet and balaclava en route. A sea of people kept the two apart the best they could. Coulthard rather wisely opted to keep his helmet on in anticipation of Schumacher's arrival, and only words were exchanged. Schumacher said Coulthard was trying to in kill me before Michael was ushered away by Tote and Stefano Domenicali, among others. The dislike between the pair, however, continued way beyond Spa 98. Number three, Nigel Mansell and Ayrton Senna, Belgium 87. Now we are getting into the serious bust-ups. This one between Mansell and Senna at Spa rightfully makes it into our top three. After the race at Spa, Francora Champs was restarted due to an incident toward the back of the pack, third place Senna managed to jump the Williams team of Mansell and Nelson Piquet to claim the lead at the first corner. Despite failing to capitalise on pole position, Mansell pursued the Lotus for much of the opening lap and having benefited from a toe on the exit of the Pouchon corner, tried to pass Senna right around the outside of Fanez. With either driver willing to compromise, the cars made contact and spun off the track. Senna was eliminated immediately and while Mansell got going again, he soon joined the Brazilian on the sidelines where the fun really began. After the incident, Mansell stormed down the pit lane and pinned Senna against the wall of the Lotus garage. I went over him, grabbed him by the overalls and pushed him up against the wall, Mansell later said as he recalled the incident. He wore loose overalls in those days and I pulled the zip up past his chin and below his nose. Next time you do that, he said, you're gonna have to do a much better job. Senna, for his part, seemed relaxed about the incident and was quoted by Tom Rubathon's book, The Life of Senna, as stating, when a man holds you around the throat, I do not think he has come to apologize. Spa 87 was just one of many close duels for two men that would have over the years as Mansell and Senna fought relentlessly for the world championship. Number two, Chico Serra and Paul Bozel, Canada, 1982. This one may lead to some head scratching. If you didn't expect these two to crop up when we started this list, we don't blame you. But this was a classic Formula One bust up and deserves the number two spot. During qualifying for the 1982 Canadian Grand Prix, Serra thought his fellow Brazilian Bozel had blocked him. Afterwards, he went to have a word with him, but what appeared to be a heated warning quickly turned into a complete brawl as people in the pit lane desperately tried to pull the two drivers apart. And number one, Nelson Piquet and Alessio Salazar, Germany, 1982. This one though is simply the gold standard when it comes to driver bust-ups. They didn't even wait to leave the track before the fists and feet went flying. 
It came when race leader at Hockenheim PK attempted to lap Salazar. Instead, they would collide at the chicane, ending the race for both of them. From there, Salazar became a punch bag for any body part PK could use as a weapon as the Brazilian went to town on the Chilean driver. And not only the fight, Murray Walker's commentary is genuinely hilarious. Whereas Senna managed to avoid making contact with a bat marker, his compatriot Nelson Piquet hit one and off the track they went. After passing the Renaults of Alain Prost and René Arnaud in quick succession at the start, Piquet had established a lead of 28 seconds by lap 18. When he came up against the ATS of Alessio Salazar, Piquet had nudged ahead as the cars approached the Ostkurve chicane, but Salazar, who retained the inside line rather than filing behind the Brazilian, failed to slow down sufficiently and his front wheel connected with the Brabham's rear left wheel, forcing both cars into a spin. So incensed was PK that he was denied a second win in a limp title offence that he was already in the process of vacating the cockpit before his car had come to a halt at the side of the track. The Brazilian gesticulated frantically as he charged towards Salazar before pushing the Chilean's head, throwing a right hand, trying to kick him and as the pair walked a few yards, throwing his gloves to the ground in a particularly theatrical manner directly in front of Salazar, who smartly opted to walk in the other direction. PK was accustomed to playing nasty, according to BBC Sports Andrew Benson. He once called Nigel Mansell an uneducated blockhead with a stupid and ugly wife and labelled Senna the Sao Paulo taxi driver. But his reaction to the Hockenheim 82 incident was something else. It remains the most iconic ding dong in Formula One history. Is it all just part of the spectacle? Those looking to remove these edgy situations from the sport should remember driver feuds have contributed to the drama of F1 throughout its history. Battles between Formula 1 drivers are the stuff of legend and Grand Prix racing has long acted as a breeding ground for overblown egos and win at all cost attitudes. And that is our roundup of some of the biggest driver bust ups in Formula 1 history. Which one stands out for you? Where were the bust ups we missed? What bust ups can we expect in 2024? Let us know what you think in the comments and remember to like, comment, share and subscribe. This has been On Track GP, I've been Jamie Chambers, keep the pedal to the metal and I'll catch you in the next video.